Welcome to Females and Fine Fettle, from Wiped Out to Wealthy. This is where conscientious women entrepreneurs and women living like a boss come to learn about balancing their personal and professional wellness with ease. If you have the enthusiasm, motivation, and grit to make it happen, then listen up every Monday. To be sure you don't miss an episode, sign up for weekly updates at femalesandfinefettle.com. The following discussion is for educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose or treat any disease. Please don't apply any of this information without first speaking with your doctor. Now, here are your hosts, Ashley Rose and Dr. Michelle, functional medicine doctor, naturopathic physician, and East Asian medical practitioner. Hey, everyone. Ashley here with Dr. Michelle. Hello. So last week in episode one, we talked about four easy ways we like to enhance creativity in life and health. Continuing on with our theme of creativity and play during the month of July, We explore ways to give your sexy lady brain a boost and clear those creative blocks while you're at it. That's right. Today, we're going to talk about optimizing our brain power. You might be wondering how this relates to creativity and play, so let me break it down. We've all been there. We have a project due, a blog post we need to write, a book we need to publish, or an event we need to plan or just a special weekend we need to prepare for. But when we actually take a moment and sit down and articulate all our brilliant ideas, nothing. (laughs) We're stuck, we're stagnant, and the juice just won't flow, and the zone seems completely out of reach. Yeah, we're exhausted, we're distracted, or sometimes our mind just feels fuzzy or murky like those neurons aren't sparking. Exactly. Most of the women I work with refer to the sensation as brain fog, and that pretty much sums it up. Regardless of the reasoning behind your snail brain, I wanted to put together a list of some super helpful tips to get those juices flowing and put that creativity into action. As with any activity, sometimes we need motivation to play too. And getting that motivation can be super difficult when our brain isn't firing as efficiently as we'd like. That being said, I've chosen my favorite food, fluid, lifestyle modification, herb, and supplement. All right, so my favorite food for boosting that brain power is bone broth. So if you're an omnivore, bone broth is one of the most nutrient-dense foods you can eat on a regular basis. It helps your joints. It calms digestion. It helps your hair, skin, nails. It boosts immunity, supports detox pathways, and helps with muscle building and repair. Exactly. It contains all sorts of yummy nutrients to help with your connective tissue like glycosaminoglycans, glucosamine, hyaluronic acid, chondroitin sulfate, minerals, electrolytes, collagen, and an awesome spectrum of amino acids. One of the specific amino acids for brain function and memory in particular is called glycine. Also, as Ashley mentioned a moment ago, bone broth helps heal the digestive tract. This is essential for brain boosting because there's a huge connection between gut health and brain health. The gut is often and affectionately referred to as our second brain because it actually contains more neurons than our spinal cord. And 90% of our serotonin or our happy neurotransmitter is produced there. Basically, if our gut is unhappy, our brain is probably unhappy. So my favorite ways to incorporate bone broth are using it as the base of soups and stews. Or like I like to do is simply having a large cup of it as my breakfast. And in the warmer months, you can use it in cold soups, mix it with some veggies or a savory dressing. Also, you could pour some into your morning smoothie or make a tasty Virgin Mary. That would be a Bloody Mary without the booze, ladies. Awesome suggestions. Super helpful, Ashley. Thanks. Next, favorite fluid for boosting that lady brain. Butter tea or coffee. I use yerba mate for mine. Yeah, Michelle mentioned in our intro episode that she likes to start her day with butter tea because she has a sensitive tummy. My stomach is made of steel and I love coffee. She recently turned me on to butter coffee and after noticing the effects, I was sold. It's like a muffin in a cup and turbocharged me with productivity. Most mornings, I make myself butter tea. You may or may not have heard of Bulletproof Coffee, but this is sort of my spin on it. Unfortunately, I have a food sensitivity to coffee, hence the sensitive tummy, which totally sucks because I love it. I love the smell. I love the taste. I love the ritual. 
You know what I mean, right? But it constipates me. I know, weird, right? It's true. And we all know from our bone broth discussion that when our gut is unhappy, our brain is unhappy. No one wants to be constipated, right? <laughs> All right, (laughs) moving on. So instead of using coffee, I use yerba mate. I'll admit it doesn't taste quite as good as butter coffee, but it gives me some serious mental clarity, good non-anxious energy, and it keeps me satiated until lunchtime. But if coffee agrees with you, by all means, use it if you want. The recipe is pretty straightforward. I'll usually brew about two cups worth of tea or coffee if you're brewing that. And then uh, you would blend in two tablespoons of grass-fed or pastured butter with a tablespoon of MCT or medium chain triglyceride oil. If I'm out of MCT oil, then I Honestly, I just add another tablespoon of grass-fed butter, so three tablespoons of grass-fed or pastured butter. Yeah, and you can check out our show notes for the recipe, but before we move on, can you explain MCT oil? Yes, of course. So MCTs, medium chain triglycerides, these are fats that are metabolized differently than most of the fats we eat. So unlike long chain triglycerides, which are the majority of the fats that we consume, MCTs need very little to no processing before they're whisked away by our liver, where they're used directly for energy production instead of being stored as fat. Basically, they act really similar to carbohydrates, but without the requirement of insulin, which means they don't really affect our blood sugar. Pretty damn cool if you ask me. A common source of MCTs is actually coconut oil. So a lot of times people will use that along with the butter. And for those of us who like to drink coffee throughout the day, we can just switch back to our regular coffee without butter after our morning cups, which Michelle will explain next. All right. Favorite lifestyle modification for boosting that lady brain. Intermittent fasting. So this one actually ties in well with the butter tea or butter coffee I mentioned before. I try to do this about three times a week, which is really all you need for the technique to work, hence the word intermittent. So here's the deal. Ideally, you want to have about 16 to 18 hours in between the time you eat dinner and your next meal with no snacking in between. So What does that actually look like? If you end up eating dinner at, say, 7 o'clock, then you wouldn't want to eat another meal until about 11 to 1, so around lunchtime, right? Not too bad. If that does sound too intense for you, I totally get it, you can actually start slow. So you can simply try doing it for a solid 12 hours and then slowly build up that um, time frame, um, over, you know, a few days or a few weeks. Even just doing the 12 hours gives your body four hours to complete the digestive processes and then an additional eight hours to detoxify, which can be super beneficial. So how does this relate to the butter tea or butter coffee I mentioned? Well, on my intermittent fasting days, which keep in mind, it's only three days a week, I'll have my butter tea in the morning, which gives my body some easy energy while still giving my digestive system a break and allowing my liver to continue its cleansing process. And Michelle has ingrained in me that the important part here is that the butter, the tea, the coffee all have to be super high quality, meaning organic at the very least, which is easy enough to accomplish. Because if you're introducing pesticide residues, synthetic hormones, GMOs, all these other contaminants into your body, you're probably doing more harm than good. And you might end up with more brain fog, which is the opposite of what you want. Fortunately, organic coffee, tea, and butter are relatively inexpensive, and they last. And you'll feel better about what you put into your body to boot. Okay, Mish, why does this intermittent fasting help your brain? Well, when we have these fasting periods, they have really potent anti-inflammatory effects on our body and on our brain. So during this anti-inflammatory phase, our body enters a really deep cleansing phase that helps to remove old and damaged cells, including old and damaged cells from our brain. On top of that, this intermittent fasting puts our brain cells under a little stress. If you think about exercise for a minute, just a minute, don't worry, you know that when you put your muscle cells under a little stress, 
they're able to grow, they're able to restructure, and then they become more energy efficient. This mild stress on our brain cells basically does the same thing, which enhances our overall brain function. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay, my favorite brain boosting herb, bacopa. I actually feel like this might be the quintessential herb for the busy lady boss. It's an Ayurvedic herb that you may also know as Brahmi or water hyssop. And it's been used for centuries as a brain tonic to help with memory, learning, and concentration. It's actually really great for anxiety too, which I know for me can be super helpful when I have a lot of external pressures going on. In addition to its brain-boosting effects, bacopa has also been used as a heart tonic, a digestive aid, a thyroid supporter, and also um, a helper with stress management. Lots of really good stuff. One of the ways that bacopa helps boost the brain is that it increases certain compounds that help to remove those old and damaged cells in the brain, really similar to the effects of intermittent fasting we just talked about. A lot of times when I think about medicinal herbs, I like to to learn who they would really work best for. So I create this little avatar in my brain. And what I mean by that is like with bacopa, for example, this herb would be perfect for the busy lady who has a lot on her plate and needs to be on point most of the day. She can be a little high strung or even anxious at times, especially around performance. So she might actually get irritable bowel or diarrhea before things like presentations, talks, or big events. And With her long history of stressors and high demand, her adrenals or her stress glands have been pretty taxed, which might have put a little extra stress on her thyroid gland. And where can you find Bacopa and how do you take it? Yeah, the, you know, the easiest way to take Bacopa that I found is just in supplement form. So I tend to use Bacopa Plus by Ayush Herbs. I'll post a link to my online medicinary in the show notes where you can get 20% off if you're interested in trying it. All right. And lastly, my favorite supplement for boosting that lady brain, fish oil. You know, as I was thinking about choosing a supplement, I was really struggling with choosing a like a targeted nutrient, something like an amino acid, an extract, or an antioxidant, but I felt conflicted because although something like that could be really beneficial for someone in the midst of cognitive decline, that's not really what we're talking about here. And on top of that, it's not really my style. Uh, Like when it comes to therapy, I don't want to put band-aids on symptoms. I want to figure out the root cause, right? So if you have brain fog or difficulty concentrating, it's most likely not because you have a deficiency in something like acetyl L-carnitine or alpha lipoic acid or huperzine A. So I gave it a lot of thought and figured the best supplement would really be fish oil. I know you might be thinking, oh yeah, we've heard this before, old news, but hear me out. Do you know why fish oil is so important? Do you know what to look for in a good quality supplement? Do you know the amount to take that's actually therapeutic? So the deal with fish oil is that it contains omega-3 fatty acids and not just any omega-3s, but a special class of long-chain omega-3s called EPA and DHA that cannot be found in plant and vegetable oils like flax or chia seeds. So if you're vegan, there are also some algae varieties out there, which are great, right? Yes, definitely. But you do need to take quite a bit for a therapeutic dose. And on top of that, the algae supplements don't tend to have enough of the EPA portion of things. So the reason fish oil is such a great supplement is because our diets tend to be overloaded with things like omega-6 fatty acids, which result in more systemic inflammation. When we shift that balance to favor more of the omega-3s, there's a really potent anti-inflammatory effect that happens, which benefits not only our brain, but also our cardiovascular system, our immune system, and it can help reduce the risk of certain cancers and improve our neurotransmitter balance, which helps with our mood. Okay, so how does this relate to our brain? <laughs> Good question. So our brain is 60% fat. It's the fattest 
organ in our body, which is pretty cool, right? But we want to supply that brain with the best fats available to help maintain that neuroplasticity, help reduce inflammation, and increase the ability to create new neural pathways, all of which will decrease that brain fog and improve your cognitive skills altogether. Regarding adequate dosing, personally, I take about 3,000 milligrams or 3 grams per day. This might sound like a lot, but if you think about typical medications, you need to take the right amount for them to be effective, right? Supplements are the same. If you don't take the right dose, they might not have the desired effect. Can people just pick up fish oil at the store? Good question. There are some brands at certain health food stores that have good quality, meaning that they've been third-party tested for heavy metals and other contaminants, but their potency tends to be really low. Like if I got a supplement at a health food store, I would typically need to take a whole handful of capsules to meet my daily needs. Speaking about uh, quality and purity, actually, I only take fish oil that comes from small fish like anchovies and sardines. These particular fish are less likely to accumulate toxins like heavy metals. So I've heard about krill oil. What's the deal with that? Yeah, you know, I don't typically recommend krill oil because... Those little crustaceans are at the very bottom of the food chain. So if we end up depleting their populations, it will inevitably affect mammals all the way up the food chain, including not just other fish, but also larger marine life like whales. I've linked to my favorite fish oil product in the show notes. It's called Trident Sap, um, and you can also get it through my online medicinary for 20% off if you're interested. All right, ladies, so to improve brain function or just clear that brain fog, try adding bone broth to your food reserve to heal the digestive tract, in turn, giving the old think tank a boost. And my new favorite morning ritual, a glorious cup of butter coffee or tea, if you prefer, introducing the herb bacopa into your supplement routine, and specifically Michelle's favorite supplement for increasing concentration and clarity, fish oil. Thank you so much for joining us again. Be sure to visit femalesandfinefettle.com and click on episode two to receive your freebie. This week, we have Dr. Michelle's brain-boosting morning routine in a convenient checklist form you can post around the house, pin on the fridge, or just keep on your computer as a daily reminder. Hey, it's Dr. Michelle, and I cannot wait to meet you back here next week. In episode three, we'll be talking about playing with others as adults. Get that mind out of the gutter. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great rest of your week. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to Females and Fine Fettle from Wiped Out to Wealthy, a podcast to fit your lifestyle. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe, rate, and review at femalesandfinefettle.com. If you have questions or topic ideas for upcoming episodes, we'd love to hear from you. Please be sure to tune in next week.